Now, it's been a while since I did an intro to a film, scrambling up a one in three incline with boulders everywhere. But I'm in a new Mercedes G500 squared. Not our usual tipple. However, take a look at this now and you'll understand why we felt we had to do a film on it. Because, well, just look at it. Because despite being the ultimate pose wagon, I mean, let's face it, you wouldn't even look at the Ventador if you saw one of these behind it. This is a very, very serious piece of off-road kit. So we've got twin coilovers at each corner and we've got portal axles which allow crazy axle articulation and this ridiculous ride height. So this thing has got a ground clearance of 450 millimetres and it will wade to a metre. It feels a lot more sophisticated in terms of its ride comfort, I mean, obviously I'm being thrown around now, than a normal G-Class. Quite looking forward to getting it on the road. I suspect it might actually be a better, more sophisticated car than standard G. There is, however, a price to pay for this excellence, and it's somewhere between a quarter of a million pounds and 300,000, depending on how you spec it. Yes, this is a fearsomely expensive car, but then what else could you have that can match this? This is a factory fresh Mercedes G-Wagon that looks like it's been done up by some lunatics in uh, Finland. What a thing. I'm going to find myself a big steep slope to go down. Watch this. Here we go. Now remember your basic off-roading. Keep your thumbs outside the wheel. Tip it over the edge. Remember it's only 300 grand. And then just let it roll down the hill. You can't do this in portable cars. And the engine, well that's effectively a detuned C63 motor. 420-ish horsepower, 450 foot-pounds of torque. Let's do a bit of wading, it loves a bit of wading. I don't want to get my quilted leather wet, do I? It's got three diff locks, like a G-Wagon, so you can lock front, centre and rear. The uh, ESP, that's interesting. You can turn it off, because obviously I wanted to come and do some massive slides, but it really doesn't give you any kind of leeway. If you have one intervention, it, it switches back on completely, so that's sort of the fun police really are at work here. Um, but the combination of those diffs, portal axles, ground clearance, and if you wanted to do the silly off-road tires, means I think you could go anywhere. So, genuinely my first exploratory few miles on the road in this thing. My bottom, the sensitive testing device underneath my torso, tells me that this thing rides 50% better than a normal G-Wagon. It's really nice and supple. You think, looking at it from the outside, this would be an absolute shambles to drive on the road. But it's not, because the G63 and G65, they just feel a bit absurd, really. And every time you clog it, a light comes on, and it just slows you down. There'll be a you know traction control warning light that says no, 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 or nine, nine, got off and cop. Um, and in this car, you can just clog it like I did then, and there's no worries. It just goes. So about 420 horsepower, 450 foot pounds of torque, pushing three tons. It's not a massive power to weight ratio, but this thing is quite sprightly. 6.5 seconds to 60 around there, and 130 flat out. I'm not sure I believe that. And also, if you do 130 miles an hour in a G-Wagon, from my experience, in the summer, you can do it for about two minutes before the screen is just a insect and aphid graveyard. Let's do a bit of an engine noise. Where's there a sign that says, do and ah, there's one of those signs that says, do engine noise. Bear with me. Bear with me. I think the only slight more shocking than the G500 squared would be it coming past you when you did this. Right, here we go. So kick down. Wicked. I'd say its turn of speed is rude. But for the way it looks, that's a rude fast car. Shouldn't be that quick. The ride in here is kind of Range Rover Sport, but no more than that. And miles better than any G-Wagon I've ever driven. There you go. Fit portal axles and great big off-road equipment and twin coilovers on each corner so you can go off-road and you make a nicer road car. Funny old world. I mean, the only difficulty is getting in and out of it, if you're like me and um, not of average height. But look around. Cabin's lovely. Always surprised how small and intimate G-Wagons are. They're not very big things. 
lavished with quilted leather and Alcantaras and carbon. I mean, you need carbon in your three-ton SUV, don't you? But no, this is a impressive road car. I thought it would be hopeless, but it's better than a standard Jeep. What a wonderfully absurd car. So the G500 squared is perfectly engineered, quite outrageous, and boy does it make you smile. <laughs>